Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this fixed beam using consistent deformation method. In this beam, we have uniformly distributed load W per unit length for the full span. We have to find the fixed end moments, reactions, and then we have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Now let us find the degree of static indeterminacy. In this beam, the number of unknown reactions and moments are 4. They are the moments MA and MP and the reactions RA and RB. The available equilibrium equations are 2. The degree of static indeterminacy is equal to 4 minus 2. We will get 2. From these 4, let us remove MB and RB. You can see that from the point B, I have removed MB and RB. So the point B becomes a free end. Previously, it was a fixed beam, but now it is a cantilever beam. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. For the reference, we can use this diagram. In this analysis, there are two coordinates. They are the vertical reaction RB and the moment MB. We are keeping them as the coordinates because we have removed them. Let us keep RB as the first coordinate. Let us keep it upwards. Let us keep the moment MB as the second coordinate. Let us keep it in the clockwise direction. Finally, if we get any negative value, we can change the directions. Now, let us see the formula to find the answers. If there is only one coordinate, we can use this formula. But in this problem, there are two coordinates. So, we can use this formula and make these two formulas. In the first coordinate, we have RB. So, P1 will be RB and in the second coordinate we have MB. So, P2 will be MB. Delta 1 and Delta 2 are the final displacements. Final displacements are the settlement or the rotations. In the beam, in the point B, there is no settlement or rotation. So, Delta 1 and Delta 2 will be 0. Finally, we will get these. Delta L is the displacement due to the loads. Here we have to find Delta 1L and Delta 2L. Delta is the displacement due to unit load or unit movement. Here we have Delta 11, Delta 12, Delta 21 and Delta 22. We know that our first coordinate is the vertical reaction RB. So the displacement Delta 11, Delta 21 and delta 1L will be the deflections. Our second coordinate is the moment MB. So delta 1, 2, delta 2, 2 and delta 2L will be the slope. All of these displacements should be found in the point B. Now in these two equations, let us find delta 1L and delta 2L. We know that delta 1L is the deflection due to the load and delta 2L is the slope due to the load. If a cantilever beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load for the whole span, the formula to find the deflection in the free end is WL power 4 upon 8 EI and the formula to find the slope in the free end is WL cube upon 6 EI. We know that delta 1L is the deflection, let us apply that, and delta 2L is the slope, let us apply that. Since the deflection occurs downwards, it will be negative and the slope will be positive. Now let us find delta 11 and delta 12. The values of delta 12 and delta 21 will be same. We will see that later. To find delta 11 and delta 12, we have to apply unit load in the first coordinate. Our first coordinate is RB. So, in the direction of RB, we have to apply unit load. 
you can see that I have applied unit load in the direction of RB. Now let us find delta 1 1 and delta 1 2. We know that delta 1 1 is the deflection. If in the cantilever beam, if the point load is acting in the point B, the formula to find the deflection is WL cube upon 3 EI. Here W is 1. So we will get L cube upon 3 EI. The formula to find the slope theta is WL square upon 2 EI. Here W is 1. So we will get L square upon 2 EI. Here the deflection occurs upwards. So the deflection will be positive and the slope will be negative. Now let us find delta 2 1 and delta 2 2. For that we have to apply unit movement in the second coordinate. Our second coordinate is the MB. So we have to apply unit movement in the same direction of MB. So we have to apply the unit movement in the clockwise direction. You can see that I have applied unit movement in the point B. We know that delta 2 1 is the deflection and delta 2 2 is the slope. In the cantilever beam, if a coupled moment is acting in the free end, the formula to find the deflection is ML square upon 2 EI. Here M is 1, so we will get L square upon 2 EI. The formula to find the slope is ML upon EI. Here M is 1, so we will get L upon EI. We know that the deflection occurs downwards. So the deflection delta 2 1 will be negative and the slope delta 2 2 will be positive. In this equation, let us apply the values of delta 1 L, delta 1 1 and delta 1 2. Negative into negative, we will get positive. From both of these two terms, we can take L square upon EI outside. Then we can eliminate EI. Also, we can eliminate L square. Here it will be L square. Now let us divide this equation by 2. When we do that, we will get this. Let us keep this equation as number 1. Now in this equation, let us apply the values of delta 2L, delta 2 1 and delta 2 2. From these two terms, let us take L upon EI outside. We can eliminate EI and we can eliminate L. Here it will be L square. Let us keep this equation as number 2. Now let us add the first and second equations. We can eliminate P2. When we add these two, we will get this. And when we add these two, we will get this. We can eliminate 6. Here it will be 2. Also, we can eliminate L. Here it will be L. Finally, for P1, we are getting this. In the second equation, let us apply the value of P1. L into L, we will get L square. 2 into 2, we will get 4. Let us take this term on the other side, so it will come as positive. When we add these two, we will get WL square upon 12. We know that P1 is RB. For RB, we have got WL upon 2. And we know that P2 is MB. For MB, we have got WL square upon 12. We have calculated RB and MB. By applying the rule sigma V is equal to 0, we can find RA, which is also WL upon 2. Now, let us take movement about the point A and find MA. In this case, we are moving towards left hand side. Clockwise will be negative and anticlockwise will be positive. MB is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. RB is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is L. The UDL is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be negative. For the UDL, we have to multiply with the distance and distance by 2. Here the distance is L, so L into L by 2. Let us assume that MA is acting in the anti-clockwise direction, so that it will be positive. We can eliminate these two terms. Finally, for MA, 
we have got a positive expression that means our assumed direction is correct ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction now we are going to draw the shear force diagram before that let us find the shear force values i am going to find out the shear force values from the point a and towards the point b in this case i am moving towards right hand side upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative using this concept i have calculated the shear force values using the values we can make the shear force diagram now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram for that we have to combine the free moment diagram and the fixed moment diagram you can see that i have combined both of the diagrams wherever they are acting together we should not mark anything we just keep the space empty wherever they are acting alone without mingling with one another we have to mark them now let us find the bending moment in the center for that we have to subtract wl square upon 12 by wl square upon 8 when we do that we are getting wl square upon 24 Now let us find the distance of point of contraflexure. In this diagram, there are two points of contraflexures on the left side and on the right side. We have to find the distance of any one of them because this is a symmetrical drawing. Let us make a section in the point of contraflexure at a distance of x from the point A. we know that in the point of contraflexure the moment will be zero let us find the moment in this section i am going to find the moment from the point a in this case i am moving towards right hand side clockwise will be positive and anti clockwise will be negative ma is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be negative the reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so it will be positive and the distance is x the udl is acting in the anti clockwise direction so it will be negative when the udl comes we have to multiply with the distance and a distance upon 2 from here let us take w outside and take w on the right side 0 upon w we will get 0 here let us take lcm let us keep 12 as lcm so here and here we have to multiply the numerator and denominator with 6 then let us take 12 on the right side 12 into 0 we will get 0 then let us rearrange this equation to make a quadratic equation in the quadratic formula let us apply the values here a is minus 6 b is 6l c is minus l square let us apply these values inside the formula 6l square we will get 36l square 2 into minus 6 we will get minus 12 when we multiply these three values we will get minus 24 l square let us add these two values after adding we are getting 12 l square then we can take l outside we know that 12 is 4 into 3 2 twos are 4 so we can take two outside then let us separate these two terms here minus and minus will be eliminated 2 six are 12 so here we will get l upon 2 6 twos are 12 we can write 6 as 2 into 3 
we know that 3 is root 3 into root 3. Here we can eliminate 1 root 3. Finally, we will get these. From here, we can form two solutions. Both of the solutions have the term L by 2. L by 2 is the center point of the beam. So, the point of counterflexure lies at a distance of L upon 2 root 3 on both of the sides of center. Now, we can make the bending moment diagram with the distance of point of counterflexures. We know that both of the point of counterflexure lies at a distance of L upon 2 root 3 from the center.